Oh, hi. Wait, figured out the problem last night with the problem, but I'm not sure if we can fix it. It's a latency problem. We can try, I tried changing the uh, frequency of the sounds in the unit for the numbers to see if that works today. I just wanted to let you know that. Okay. We can go back to the group. Okay. I just wanted to let you know that. Hello, everybody. You guys make me so proud. Look at you all socially distanced. I know it. Urgh. Give us a few more months, guys, and then we'll be done with this. All right. So our speaker is taking a refreshment break, but I'll, I'll go ahead and um, kind of get started here. Thank you so much for being here. I wanted to share with you. I'm Mrs. Smead. I'm your principal. Um, we are so happy that each and every one of you is here in our school. We work really, really hard every spring to go out and find the most amazing group of freshmen, and we found it in you guys. I'm gonna say to you right now, and I hope that this will, uh, will mean a lot, is that you have not gotten to experience the real compass yet. Ever since this year started, you've been wearing masks, you've been socially distancing, um, we've gone back and forth between blue schedules and yellow schedules and green schedules. We want you not only to finish this year successfully, but to want to come back next year when you can see what Compass Academy really is about, because it is freaking awesome. So it's super important that you work hard, you get the best grades you can, you pass your classes, you go to class so you're ready to be a sophomore, but it's really hard this year because there's so much getting in your way and there's always this mask between you and the world. 
And so your facilitators talked to me, and I happen to know a really awesome guy named Dr. Matt Larson. He's right there. He's going to be talking to you this morning. Uh, I won't go into any great detail, but he has been a very important part of my family for about six years. And so uh, please give him a huge round of applause and listen to what he has to say because it's going to make a difference, I promise. Okay. Thanks. So I'm Dr. Matt Larson. I'm ridiculously excited because I'm fully vaccinated. I got the second dose like two weeks ago. So anyway, they're not mandating masks. I'm like, boom, I'm done with this whole world. Because <laughs> I'm really excited to get back to life the way it was about three years ago. I know it's only been like one year, but doesn't it feel like a whole lot longer than that? Okay. I was thinking of what to name this chat, talk, presentation, and I was like, Let's see, how to, manage, how to manage distress during times of quarantine. It's, I was like, COVID sucks. It just, it just sucks. I apologize if that word's not allowed in your house. I'm sure there's a few of you. <laughs> but COVID sucks. So who am I? Why am I hopefully worth listening to? I could read you the whole bio on me being a doctor, and I'm a child psychiatrist, and I got double board certified in Reno, Nevada after going to school in Iowa and more and more. I could tell you I went to Skyline. I don't know if that's good or bad. I like it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome. This was Clary Gale back then? That's what I thought. Okay. This is also me, and that's how most people know me. Seriously, if like, anybody follows me on Facebook, all I do is drink Dr. Pepper and post about it all day long. I did steal your Dr. Pepper cream soda, <laughs> and it was amazing. And it's in the fountain drink at Common Sense, in case anyone's keeping track. Also, this is me. I'll leave that up there for a minute. Um, I very, very much believe in self-expression. Yes, I believe in dressing professionally when I'm being a professional. I'm a doctor presenting to you this morning. I also do tons of theater, and I do costumes, and I do silly, crazy stuff. Has anyone seen the movie A Christmas Story with the leg lamp? So I own a full-size leg lamp. I took my whole family to Cleveland, Ohio, so we could tour the house where they filmed the movie and buy a leg lamp and buy the bunny suit so I could say, it looks like a pink nightmare. So anyway, so I rather enjoy my life. I rather like my life. I like doing theater. I'm an audition for Oliver for this fall. My son wants to be in the a mall and the night visitors that's coming up soon. We do a lot of theater and stuff in my house. When I was a little kid, the, space, the Challenger space shuttle blew up. Then I was locked in my lockers when I was at Eagle Rock. I was actually that small in seventh grade. I fit inside the locker. I was thrown in trash cans at Skyline High School. When I was in high school, there was the first big school shooting at Columbine, so that freaked the crap out of me. Then 9-11 happened when I was 19. I'd been out of the country for 10 days and I couldn't return. And then more stuff and more stuff and it kept going and now we're at COVID. And, I mean this very, very honestly, life's good. Um, I like studying US history, American history, Revolutionary War, and as the more I study it, the more I'm like, oh, this stuff's been happening forever. And like, if you're worried about the political stuff going on, inauguration day to day, I'm like, oh, this stuff's been going on forever. <laughs> I go back and I read Andrew Jackson, I read about Jefferson and Adams, like, do you guys know Thomas Jefferson, John Adams? Do those names mean anything? Hopefully they mean something. Because everybody talks about they were best friends and they died on the same day on the 4th of July. Did you know they hated each other for 15 years? Like worst enemies? Like Jefferson replaced Adams as president, kicked Adams out, kicked Adams' kids out of the government, like rescinded all their jobs. I mean, I was like, oh, there's been political parties and people that hate each other forever. And we're all still here and we're all still fine, and the country still works, and we're still good. So I don't know how worried you are about that, but I'm like, okay, I worry this stuff happens, but I'm like, we're fine. We got another, a rather nice country, and it works rather well, and we've had lots of crap, and we keep fixing it. <laughs> so we'll keep fixing it. Problems in the world are kind of like snow in Idaho. Is the snow here? Is it going anywhere? So you can complain about it, or you can accept it and enjoy it, but it's here. 
<laughs> it's not going anywhere. Like, I have people that complain all year long, oh, the snow is miserable. Well, the, the roads are a sheet of ice. Why hasn't the city council done anything about the sheet of ice on the ground? I can't believe it. And they go and they go and I'm like, it's Idaho. <laughs> There's snow. <laughs> There's ice. <laughs> I roll down the windows and drive with the windows down because it's fun. <laughs> Or buy a really old convertible and throw the top down and drive with the down during a snowstorm, because it's fun. Because you can enjoy the snow or you can complain about the snow, but it's here. Kind of like COVID. It's here. Hopefully in about six months, it's not here anymore. I'm really hoping that happens. <laughs> so, oh, the slides didn't work very well. We're missing half the information. Such is life. I'll pull out my piece of paper so I can see everything and tell you what's not on there. Pause. Okay, so this is supposed to have eight things on it. We're going to talk about the fact that thoughts happen. One of our goals is to keep your mind where your body is. Everyone just wants to feel better. There are no bad emotions. Limits set us free. Life has conflicting messages. A ship is safe in harbor, and failure is the plan. So here we'll go through them all. Here's them. Oh, other direction. Here we go. Rule number one, don't believe everything you think. Is there anyone here that can control all their thoughts? You can pick every thought that comes in your head. <laughs> no, it's stupid. There's no possible way. Is there anybody here who has thoughts they don't like? They wish they didn't have them. They're annoying. They get in your way. They screw your life up. They make you feel depressed. They make you feel anxious. They make you feel worried. Because I talk to kids who are like, well, I thought this, so I must do it. I'm like, I thought about knocking over a casino in Vegas. It doesn't mean I'm going to. I've actually planned out the whole thing. Like, when I grew up, I was like, how would I rob a bank? Okay, I would call in a bomb scare at the high school on the other side of town. All the police would go there. Then I could rob the bank on the other. Like, I've planned the whole thing out. <laughs> and guess how many times I've done it? None. Because I'm not going to do that. I don't want to rob a bank. I rather like my life. <laughs> right? <laughs> Denial is the first sign. <laughs> I've thought through all sorts of interesting things, crazy things, stupid things, freaky things I'm not going to tell you about, because we have thoughts, and thoughts happen. And the more we cannot judge ourselves for every single random thought that goes through our head, the better we are. It's like, growing up as a teenager, I assume most of you have no idea what to think or what to believe or who you like or who you don't like. Like, I had some people I was talking about, sorry, I hope parents don't get offended with this, but oh well. <laughs> um, they were asking, should we allow condoms to be distributed in schools? And somebody else was saying, well, if you, if you show a young man a condom, his mind will turn to thoughts of sex. And the person next to him was like, show a young man a lug wrench, and his mind will turn to thoughts of sex. <laughs> it happens anyway. <laughs> you don't need encouragement. <laughs> You're teenagers. It happens. So part of it is, don't blame yourself for every thought that goes through your head. Second is you don't act on every thought you have. Thoughts are thoughts. Feelings are feelings. I have emotions all day long. It doesn't mean I act on every single one of them. The goal is to know who you want to be. Take all the random thoughts and try to use the ones that help you become that person and be that person. You can't control every thought that goes through your head. Your brain has two thinking systems. If you don't learn anything else today, hopefully you learn this and it makes sense. So you have your scanning mind. Okay, um, you walked in there this morning. Okay, everyone look around the room for a second. Okay, now look back at me. Okay, did your eyes notice every person in the room? Yes, you, you visually saw them. Did you count them? Did you register who has a blue shirt, who has a pink shirt, who's wearing a jacket, who has long hair, who has short hair, who has green hair, who has purple? No. Your mind noticed it, and it moved on. It goes, yep, there's people, students, everything looks normal, we're good. It's like when I walked in here, I looked around the room and I saw all of you. I didn't see anything threatening, scary, weird, or particularly different, so I just moved on. Because your passive mind just goes, everything fits, everything fits, we're good, move on. It doesn't detail, it doesn't remember, it doesn't care about anything else. Also, your scanning mind never stops noticing. You ever notice you can be playing a video game, fully watching a movie, 
and you hear your mother say your name four rooms away, you're like, what? Because they're talking about taking your phone away. <laughs> Something like that. Because your mind is always scanning. Your mind is hearing everything. Your eyes are seeing everything. And most things, it's going, forget that, forget that, ignore that, ignore that, forget that, forget that. Like, when you got dressed this morning, I assume you noticed everything. You felt your underwear, you felt your pants, you felt your socks, you felt your shoes, you felt your jacket, you felt everything go on. When's the last time you thought about the point on your socks, on your leg where your socks squeeze on your calf? Just now, because I mentioned it. <laughs> but I'm guessing most of you stopped noticing that a while ago. Just like I haven't thought about my shoes, I'm wearing them. But now that I've thought about it, I'm like, oh, I can't feel my shoes. Oh, there's that little spot that I don't like that rubbed raw a while ago. Your mind scans. It says, what's important? I don't need to notice that anymore, and it stops noticing. Also, your scanning mind makes mistakes. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. Um, how many of each animal did Moses put on the ark? Two of each. Why is the answer none? Because it was Noah. Why did you guys not pick up that I said the wrong name? I said, how many of each animal did Moses put on the ark? The reason is because your scanning mind didn't care. I don't know if any of you guys are Christian or Bible scholars or anything, but most people know Bible, Noah, ark, story. They got that much. And your scanning mind said, Moses, old guy, prophet, Bible, Christ fits. He was in the right category, so your mind moved on to answer the question. It didn't catch the detail that's off. Which is what your scanning mind is supposed to do. It just notices and moves on. How many of you have siblings? How many of you get called your sibling's name on accident by your parents? Right, you get called the dog's name. Because your parents' mind is scanning. Usually all their mind gets to is loved in the household. That could be the dog, the parent, the aunt, the uncle, male, female, they don't care. And they just throw out a name. I mean, like, my, uh, my wife's family only has one, one boy. <laughs> and the dad wants to be like, uh, Barbara, no, Leash, no, Joni, no, Jeff! He'd be like, Dad, I'm your only son. <laughs> you can't get the name right? I'm the only guy in the house. It's because your scanning mind doesn't care. It gets in the right category and throws out an answer. Your scanning mind is wrong all the time. You can train your scanning mind. That's what you actually are paying for when you go to a mechanic, when you're going to an expert, you're going to a doctor. You're trying to find somebody who their scanning mind has been trained over so many years to notice something that's out of order. Like your mechanic can listen to you talk, you're like, well, when I was stopping, this happened. When I started driving, this happened. Then the sound happened. Then I filled up on gas and this happened. And then I was driving an interstate. When I got up to 80 miles an hour, this happened. They go, wait, that part's interesting. What happened when you went 80? Because they hear something that's a red flag. Their scanning mind knows what to watch for. I'm a doctor. I'll ask you 57 questions. One of them, I'm like, that answer, that's different. And that's actually a problem. We need to work on that. So your scanning mind filters out most things. Then you have your focusing mind. Oh, and it went down below. It, it's supposed to have two columns. Everything I have that has two columns is going to fail today. Such is life. And I'm licking my finger. How long has it been since you asked somebody to do that? That's problematic. Okay. So your focusing mind is your active thought. It analyzes. And it overanalyzes. How many of you have noticed somebody talking in the corner and then you're like, are they talking about me? What are they talking about me? I think they noticed me. They saw that I'm bald. What if they don't like that I'm bald? Do they like that I'm bald? What if they don't like me? What if they think I'm a skinhead? Do these kids think I'm a neo-Nazi from northern Idaho that's going to come down from Ruby? Your mind can overanalyze and overwork and go through so many things. I assume you guys do this. Like, I replay conversations. Do you guys go back over conversations in your head? Why did I say that? I can't believe I said that. Why did I think that? I shouldn't look that way. Did I look down? Oh no, where am I staring? I didn't mean to stare there. Uh, I'm looking somewhere else. <laughs> we overanalyze. That's your focusing brain. Okay, now, sh Prin Principal Smead, is that the right term? Okay. So, your mind makes mistakes. And guess when you are most prone to make mistakes? The, the word I use is halt, H-A-L-T, when you are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. is when you're most likely to make mistakes with your analyzing brain and analyze stuff wrong. 
It's kind of like, I want to be a nice parent. I like being the parent that's happy when he comes home and greet my kids. And they, uh, they run up to me, they're like, Dad, and I'm like, kids. And it's that nice, picturesque. But most of the time I pull in and I'm walking in and I have my bag and I have my coat. And the kids run up and I've had a busy day. And I'm like, would you just give me five seconds to walk in the dang door before you attack them? You know? And I'm like, why did I act that way? Well, I'm hungry and I'm angry and I'm tired and it's been a long day. And it made me be the person I didn't want to be. Hey, Principal Smead for the win. There's a, there's a bonus for you. Okay, your focusing mind also wanders. Like when you're sitting in class, when you're sitting in here, you have been noticing me the whole time, but I assume your mind has wandered. How many of you have already checked your phone since I started talking? <laughs> like half of you, <laughs> probably two thirds of you. I'm well aware that's what happens. I could check my phone while I'm talking with you and not actually feel too guilty about it. <laughs> Because we get distracted and we get bored. And there's a guy up there who's been talking for like 15 minutes now. So what's on Snapchat? <laughs> also, your focusing mind does consider your ethics, your values, your religion, your promises, your vows, your standards. Your scanning mind does not care in the least who you think you are or who you want to be. It's just going to notice stuff. And it's just going to feel stuff. And it's going to like stuff that the other part of your mind goes, no, you're not allowed to like that. Well, that was intriguing. It's not supposed to be intriguing. It's like people driving by a car accident that's big and horrific. And you're on the interstate and you're looking over and everyone's slowing down. Like, oh, oh. Like, well, you looked on purpose. Yeah, but I didn't want to. Part of you wants to. Right. We all have these random intrusive thoughts. It's like 2 a.m. It's like... Why are none of the letter C's in the words Pacific Ocean pronounced the same? Pacific Ocean. Oh my goodness. None of the C's are pronounced the same. I'd never thought of that before. <laughs> we have the most random thoughts, and they're weird. You're going to be thinking about Pacific Ocean for a while now. <laughs> okay, you still get to choose what you do. You still get to choose what you watch, what you read, what you listen to, what you say, what you focus on. You can decide what's going in your head most often. You can't decide all the thoughts, but you can pick what you pay attention to. You can pick the music you listen to. You have some influence in your own life. Keep your mind where your body is. Where are you right now? You're sitting in the auditorium listening to a guy. So as much as you can, keep your mind in the auditorium listening to the guy. This is Depression is usually when we're focused on stuff that happened before. Anxiety is usually when we're focused on stuff that might happen later. Mindfulness is when you get your mind back to right here, right now. What's going on now? Because I'm guessing for most of you, life's pretty good at this moment, right? Was it Wednesday morning? You're sitting in school. You probably had breakfast. You're probably going to have lunch. It's not too cold in here. It's a pretty comfortable moment, pretty comfortable day. So in this moment, life's pretty good, I assume. Stuff that happened this morning could be crappy. Stuff this afternoon could be crappy. But if you just focus on now, now's pretty good. Okay. I already asked this question, but that is my main problem with phones. I don't care what you do on your phone. I was, my sister lives in Salt Lake. She's a school teacher. She came up and we went to Buffalo Wild Wings. We're sitting there chatting. And about an hour into dinner, she's like, Matt, you've checked your phone 26 times since we sat down to dinner. I'm in town for three hours. Do you think maybe you could just, you know, pay attention to me? It was like, ouch. It was like, valid point. When you're with someone, be with them. When you're watching a movie, watch the movie. When you're on your phone, be on your phone. When you're in class, be in class. Pick the thing you're doing and just do that one thing. Multitasking is a myth. Multitasking is telling two people at once, I don't care about either one of you enough to give you my full attention. Multitasking is just switching back and forth really fast between things and, lo and losing and missing stuff as you go back and forth. So, why do people eat ice cream? Or binge watch TV shows? Because it feels good. Why do we drink alcohol or drink chocolate milk? To feel good. 
Why do people go on vacation or hit the snooze button? Why do people kiss? Because it feels good. Why do people have sex and go on roller coasters? And why do they self-harm? Why do they cheat in class? Why do they ignore their chores? Why do they go to church? Why do they use drugs? Why do they watch porn? Because it feels good. We do stuff because it feels good. Everyone I know just wants to feel better than they do. Why do we click next episode when we know we should be asleep already? Because in that moment, watching the next episode feels better than trying to go to sleep. Right. We do tons of stuff that we know. We're like, this is probably a bad idea. Here we go. <laughs> and you do it anyway. Why do I drink like 200 ounces of Dr. Pepper a day? Because it feels good. I know it's not healthy for me. Carbonation is bad for you. I'm drinking CO2. That's what my body's trying to breathe out and get rid of. It's a waste product, and I'm putting it in my body on purpose. Carbonation's bad for you. Caffeine's bad for you. Sugar's bad for you. Aspartame's bad for you. Dye is bad for you. Phosphoric acid is bad for you. And guess what? I love it. So what I'm going for is I'm trying to pick stuff in my life that it may not be healthy, but it's not destructive. It's not screwing up my life. It's not costing me the things I care about. I care about my wife, my kids, my job, house. I care about my religion. I care about my stuff. Dr. Pepper does not mess any of that up. So I'm good. If it messed that stuff up, then I would have to analyze, okay, is it worth screwing up the stuff I care about? So most mistakes we make, how many of you have been told you did something wrong? All of us. We do stuff wrong all the time. Most mistakes or things you do wrong are just shortcuts. Anybody seen this movie, Inside Out? I don't know what you got out of the movie. What I got out of the movie is there are no bad emotions. What happens when Joy tries to say that sadness is a bad emotion? Don't touch anything. Don't do anything. Sit inside the circle. Don't touch the brain. Don't touch the mind. Don't touch the memories. Does it work? If you try to ignore sadness and say it's a bad emotion, I'm not willing to feel sadness, your mind will break. If you try to ignore anger, your mind will break. Anger is just a sign that you care about something and someone else is messing with it. That's what makes you angry. Sadness means you care about something and it's not going well. And you want it to go better. Sadness is a good thing. Anger is a good thing. Now, suicide's a bad thing. Violence is a bad thing. There's bad things you can do because of sadness. There's bad things you can do because of anger. Sadness and anger aren't a problem. Neither is disgust, neither is fear, neither is joy. But this, is sex bad? Is feeling dopamine and adrenaline bad? Is being pain-free bad? Is being calm bad? No. What about sex you regret or assault? Violence, meth, thrills, opiate drugs, marijuana, alcohol, and skipping school. Those will all make you calm. I can feel very calm if I drink alcohol, smoke pot, and skip work. I will be very calm. <laughs> and I will also be fired. <laughs> right? A little too calm. If I can figure out how to get calm that doesn't hose my day the next day, that's better. So I'm going for ways to get calm and ways to feel pain-free and ways to feel relaxed that don't mess up my life the next day and a year from now and five years from now. I like having options. I like having a medical degree. I like being able to be a doctor. I use enough of that stuff, I might not get caught. You can get away with stuff for a long time. I assume lots of you have gotten away with lots of stuff for a long time. How many people had their phone taken away and they just got another one their parents don't know about? And it's been charging under the mattress or behind the thing? Or... Right. You get the iPhone 8 because your neighbor or friend just got the iPhone 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever on. I know, you can work around your parents. You can work around the principal. You can work around anything. I know, and you can get away with most of it. The question is, can you get away with it forever? At what point does it cause a problem? It's kind of like driving drunk. Nobody gets caught driving drunk the first time. They get caught the 50th time when they're pretty sure I'm good at this. I've driven buzz so many times. I never get in trouble. Um, I know this is a little old, but high school senior student results. 32% in Idaho had used marijuana, 58% had tried alcohol, 17% had misused prescription medications, 
37% had had sex, 17% had made a suicide plan, 10% had attempted suicide. I give this to you as facts, facts, so you know this is what's going on in Idaho with you and your classmates. Some of you think everybody's drinking. Actually, it's 58% by the end of high school. So it's a little over half. Some of you think everybody's having sex. Well, actually, only about a third. Some of you think nobody's attempting suicide. Well, actually, it's 10%. Some of you think everybody's attempting suicide. No, it's 10%. So it depends on who you talk to. Like, I worked with somebody, and I was like, are you using any, I was interviewing somebody, uh, do you use any legal drugs? They're like, no. And I'm like, your drug screen's positive for marijuana. Come on, everyone uses marijuana. And I was like, no. They're like, yes. It's like, no. They're like, everyone I know uses marijuana. I'm like, you know different people than I do. I assume it's the same with you. Your view of the world is probably the world you see every day. Your family, your friends, your neighborhood, your classmates. So we all want to feel good. My goal is to enjoy now without messing up later. Like, why is it worth graduating from high school? I wanted it because I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I figured, probably college. When I went to college, I was gonna be a Broadway actor. That didn't work out. <laughs> But I liked having the degree so I could go to something else that turned to medical school, I was gonna be a pediatrician, then I was gonna be a surgeon, then I was gonna be a physical rehabilitation doctor. But each step I took still gave me options so eventually I could become what I wanted to be in the end. I changed my mind a thousand times. But if you keep your options open, because like you could graduate high school, you could go to college or not go to college, but you got the diploma, so it's easier. So you do decide now, the thing you pick to enjoy today, if you're ignoring me the whole time on your phone, you can do that. I'm not going to stop you. Does that decision make anything better or worse tomorrow? If you choose to skip today, does it make life easier or worse tomorrow? Five years, 10 years, 50 years. Can you handle stress in a way that makes your life easier tomorrow or makes it worse tomorrow? Like I work with alcoholics all the time and they love alcohol and it calms them down. I'm like, yes. And is it helping you be calm in the morning, and calm on the weekend, and calm on the vacation with your family, and calm at work, and calm at the conference, calm when you can't use alcohol. Do you have any other coping skills? <laughs> They're like, oh. I'm like, if you drink, drink, fine, whatever. But can you go without it and use other skills to calm yourself down? I'm like, oh. I'm like, yeah, you should get good, you should get, good at that. Um, also, hopefully I can get this across in a way that makes sense. Limits set us free. That probably sounds awkward. Um, do any of you have driver's licenses? Your freshmen? <laughs> okay. How fast, well, some of you probably know this, how fast can you drive on the interstate? What is it? 80. 80. Yes, you can physically drive faster, but that's the speed limit. Okay. How slow can you drive on the interstate? If you go under about 60, you're probably gonna, you're probably gonna get hit in the back by somebody going 80. Because does the interstate have any stop signs? Does it have any place where people can turn on from going zero to turning onto the interstate? Or does it always have on-ramps so people can accelerate and get up to speed by the time they're on? The whole point of the interstate is we're going to limit. There's no hitchhiking on the interstate. I know people do. It's not allowed. There's no horses on the interstate. Can you ride a horse on other streets? Yeah. Can you ride your bicycle on other streets? Yes. Can you ride your bicycle on the interstate? No. <laughs> they put limits on the interstate so everyone can go 80 the whole time. You can be free and fast because they set limits to keep you safe. Traffic laws keep you safe. It's like stoplights. Do they make, speed, do they make traffic faster or slower? They make it faster. Because they turn green from one side and everybody can go at once instead of stopping every single car to switch back and forth and back and forth. You ever get to a four-way stop or a roundabout and nobody knows what they're doing? <laughs> roundabout is supposed to make life faster unless nobody knows what they're doing and then it makes it slower. The limits can make life faster. Like when I was in college, freshman year, um, my college had a curfew and I broke it every single night. <laughs> I was staying up late every single night. And eventually, the uh, person in charge of that apartment complex, it was, of course, it was a girl's apartment I was at, because that's what I was interested in at the time. <laughs> and the apartment owner would come by, it's like, Matt, 
You were supposed to leave 45 minutes ago. Okay, I'm out. See you. Next time, Matt, it's been 27 minutes. Matt, it was an hour and a half ago. Matt, and they just go through how late I was. And after about three months, the guy was like, Matt, you're an adult. You signed the paper saying you'd live the rules and you'd leave a curfew. Do you need a babysitter? Do I really have to stop by every single night and kick you out? Because you are so incompetent, you can't get a watch. And I was like, yeah, I can do that myself. <laughs> I'll be fine. I was like, I don't need someone else setting my limits for me. I can set my own. It's like, do your parents set phone limits on you? How much time you can spend? How much time you can spend on the Nintendo, on the Switch? How much time to spend on homework? Guess what happens if you set your own limit? Your parents leave you alone. Guess what happens if you get your homework done ahead of time? Parents leave you alone. It's like when I was in school, I realized most of the teachers didn't actually care about 90% of the school rules. They cared about me getting good grades, and they cared about being respected. So if I treated the teacher nice, and I didn't talk when they were lecturing, and I got my work done, then I could leave any time I want. I could show up late. I could leave early, and nobody cared. But the kid who didn't get good grades or didn't turn their stuff in, if they arrived five seconds late, guess what the teacher said? Tardy. Mark me down. Okay, that's good. No, principal, get out of here. You're talking again in class. That's the last time you're talking to my class. Get out of here. I don't know if you guys have those kind of teachers here. I have those kind of teachers at Skyline. I'm like, if they feel respected and I get good grades, they don't care about the rest. Same thing with parents. If I'm not getting in trouble, I can stay out as late as I want. Once I'm getting in trouble, then there's a curfew. Then there's limits. Then there's rules. Set your own limits. It's like I wanted to do well in school, in college, but I was terrible going to bed on time. I was up till two or three every single night. And then I was doing worse in school, and I was like, I need to set a limit. So I scheduled Spanish class for 7 a.m. Because I don't skip class. Some of you guys probably skip class. I'm not a guy that skips class, and I knew it. So I was like, if I schedule a class, I'll show up on time. If I have a 7 a.m. class, I'm going to go to bed on time. Set your own limit. If you want to exercise, set your own exercise limit. If you want to eat differently, if you want to sleep differently, set your own limit. Life gives you some conflicting messages. How many of you are told to be happy just the way you are? Accept yourself just the way you are. The key to having it all is knowing you already do. Um, what else is there? If you aren't happy now, nothing else will make you happy. Okay, how many of you are told, never stop striving, always keep improving, get better, always improve, get better, you can do more, you can be more, get that next degree, get that next job, get that next thing. So which one is it? Good question. The answer is yes. It's both. Of course it's both. If you're waiting for something to be happy in the future, it's like people who are waiting for COVID to end to be happy. It's like, I got the vaccine, I'm all sorts of excited for it to end. And if it doesn't, let's say COVID permanent. I don't think masks are going to be permanent. I don't think social distancing is going to be permanent. It's going to go away. If it didn't, could you manage to be happy like it is? Could you enjoy it this way? And I think that's the key to life is, I do want it to change. I want life to get better than it is. Can I enjoy it the way it is? Yeah, I can like this. And I'm gonna keep working to get it changed. And I'm gonna keep working to make it better. Be happy the way it is and keep working to make it better. Lessons I've had from COVID. We are really bad when our schedule changes. Um, like, I'm married, I've got four kids, I've got a foster son, and life is pretty scheduled, pretty nice, pretty even. I wake up in the morning, I do breakfast with my kids, I go to work at 8 o'clock, I come home about 5.30, I'm with my kids till about 9, about three and a half hours, they go to bed, spend some time with my wife, watch some TV, go to bed. I'm really good at being a nice guy with that schedule. And then COVID hit, and I was home with my kids 14 hours a day. Guess who's not good with his kids in the same house 14 hours a day? <laughs> okay, it's like watching spouses who one used to be at work all day and the other one was home, and suddenly they're home together all day. Guess what happens? They hate each other. <laughs> they love each other, <laughs> and they hate each other. Because <laughs> they're not good at managing that level of stress for that long. Or there's one parent who's really good at being the home parent all day long with the kids. The other parent's really good at being the work parent. And then they switch roles and everything goes haywire. Because we got really good at one way of managing stress. How many of you have had a boyfriend or girlfriend, 
and then broken up and then you didn't know what to do with your day. You didn't know how to handle your stress because that's the person I talk to. That's the person I call. That's the person I reach out to and they're not there anymore. We're really good at managing stress in a way we learn and then when it switches, we get screwed up. COVID did that for all of us. It messed up our parents. It messed up our siblings. It messed up our kids. It messed up your teachers. This only went from... Do you have any teachers that are amazing teachers in class and they're really crappy on Zoom? Because it happens. Because they got really good one way of teaching. They're like, I am so good at this. And then it changed. It's like, dad, gum it. I'm not very good at this way. Give yourselves a break. Give your parents and teachers a break. And remember, seriously, the more I read Amer American history, world history, I'm like, oh, this isn't even close to the end of the world. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> um, hopefully, your parents, your school teachers are like great coaches. Has anyone watched The Karate Kid? Is it Karate Kid? Okay. Has anyone seen the, the new one with the jacket on the post over and over again? Has anyone seen the old one with wax on, wax off? Okay. How long did he make Danielson <laughs> paint the fence <laughs> and wax on, wax off? Hours and hours and hours and hours. Because once you practice something, you get good at it. Have any of you watched... Uh, any sports movie? Anybody watch Room of the Titans? Anybody watch Miracle? Uh, Coach, Car what's a good sports movie these days? Water Boy. <laughs> Water Boy. <laughs> Gatorade. H2O! <laughs> okay, most sports movies, they're really inspirational. And then they kind of skip all the practice. They do a movie music montage, and there's a song playing, and you see all the people exercising, exercising, doing the drills, doing the drills, doing the drills. That's actually the most important part of the movie, is the drills and the practice and the practice. How many of you are good at studying? <laughs> How many of you are good at communicating what you need to your teacher? How many of you are good at getting your parents to give you what you want? Okay, some of you are pretty good at that. Okay, whatever you practice is what you get better at. How many of you good are good at flirting with the person you want to flirt with? No. <laughs> right? We're good at what we practice. If you don't practice it, you will not get good at it. I don't know if you think I'm a good public speaker or not. I do this a lot. I practice a lot because I want to be good at it. You don't just pop in and it happens. Practice what you want to be good at. Your teachers should push you. They should teach you new ways. It doesn't mean you can't get good. It means you're not good at the moment. It's like watching my son play basketball. He made the school team this year. He's at White Pine. He loves it. He's excited. And his coach is like, practice dribbling. He's like, I hate practice dribbling. I want to shoot. It's like, that's great. Practice dribbling. Because <laughs> you don't get to the basket <laughs> unless you can dribble. Your coaches, your teachers, your parents, hopefully they are teaching you and making you practice. I want you to practice using good ways of dealing with stress so you don't end up needing five monsters and energy drinks to get through the day. So you don't need to cut. So you don't need to skip school. So you don't need to stay up till 2 a.m. watching more YouTube videos. So you can find healthier ways of dealing with stress. You can avoid all, you can try to avoid all stress and all problems. But it's kind of like they say, a ship is safe in harbor, but that's not what ships are for. We didn't build ships to look pretty in harbor. We built them to go out and manage going through storms and seas. You are going to fail many, 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 many times. You are going to struggle. You are going to question everything. You're going to get irritated. You're going to say lots of stuff you regret. Like people that say no regrets, I'm like, I get the message. You can make all your past useful. But I regret tons of stuff. I regret stuff from this morning. I regret stuff from five minutes ago. <laughs> I shouldn't have been drinking so much Dr. Pepper because now I have to go to the bathroom, but I can't really leave the stage in the middle of my talk to go to the bathroom. It's because it tastes amazing. Just because I know what's healthy doesn't mean I'm great at it. You're going to ask a thousand times, why me? How many of you have said that about yourselves? Why me? Why my class? Why did COVID happen when it was my freshman year? When it was my turn to be on the track team? When it was my turn to do this thing and my thing got canceled? How many of you had something important canceled because of COVID? <laughs> yeah, not everyone did. A lot of people did. Some people it was their graduation. I think 
District 91 had their district musical like scheduled to start like March 14th and the world shut down March 13th. Beauty and the Beast, yeah. I was like, holy crap, it shut down on opening night. I watched the same thing happen with Elf. Like the world re-shut down the day they were supposed to open. They let him do five performances, then two cast members got COVID, shut it down. So does anybody else watch college basketball? Am I the only one? <laughs> anyway, I watched March Madness every year. I was really mad last year when it got canceled. <laughs> Kyle Guy, the guy crying right there. He was part of the 2018 team. Virginia had the best team they've ever had in the history of the university. Thomas Jefferson started the University of Virginia. It's an old school. And they're the best season they've ever had. Number one seed in the entire 64 teams. They're the best team there is. No number one team has ever lost the first game of the playoffs, ever. And guess what happened? They lost the first game. 2018 was the first time it's ever, ever, ever happened. And they lost to the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, who no one's ever heard of and no one will ever hear of again. This tiny little school that no one knew about, that has an awesome Twitter account, by the way. They, they beat Virginia. And everyone blamed Kyle Guy. He was the star. He shut down his Twitter feed. He turned off Facebook. He turned off everything. He got threats. He said he had suicide thoughts. Because that was his world. Everyone picks the thing that's their world. Basketball was his world. It's everything he cared about and everything he worked for hours and hours a day and every weekend for years to get to that tournament. And he went home, visited with family, talked, went back to school. And that's in the next year when they won the tournament the following year. Virginia had never been to <laughs> two years in a row. They went two years in a row and they went from the joke and the worst failure there's ever been to the champions and the best there's ever been. My son came down, this was just after Thanksgiving, about 10 o'clock, he's nine. He was 10 at the time. He's, yeah. No, he was eight at the time, he's nine now, okay. And he said, oh, I have a huge school project due in the morning, can you help me? No. Go back to bed. It's like, what? I'm like, we just got done with Thanksgiving break. You had two weeks for me to help you with this project. You had all day for me to help you with this project. It is 10 p.m. Go to bed. He came down 10 minutes later. Can you help me set my alarm for 6 a.m.? Yes. Will you help me in the morning? No. But Dad, I'm like, no. You had two weeks to do this project. You did not do it. Your lack of work is not my emergency. <laughs> so he said, will you wake up? He woke up at 6 a.m. and he said, Dad, will you unlock the computer and I'll do it myself? Yes. I had breakfast. I went to work. I was pretty sure he was probably going to get a C- minus or a D on the project because he was going to rush and get it done. And then a friend sends me this picture that afternoon. He printed off some black and white pictures, found some information on the Tasmanian devil, built a Lego model. <laughs> And he got an A on the project. And I was like, this was supposed to be a lesson in failure. But he nailed it anyway. <laughs> OK. <laughs> like, I was sure I was going to teach him. I'm like, if you procrastinate to the last minute, you will not succeed. And he found a way to succeed anyway. But I was like, OK. You can succeed and work through things. And you can have failures and work through them. My daughter wanted to make money last summer. And in my house, you don't get money for chores. I'm like, um, I give you the house and the food. You do the chores. That's how this works. But I will pay you for clearing snow, for mowing the lawn, for edging. There's some things I pay my kids for. I don't know what your parents agree, but that's your parents. That's what the edging looked like. <laughs> I'll show this to other men in my neighborhood who like their immaculate, perfect lawns. And they're like, <gasps> never again. <laughs> Right there, oh, she failed miserably. Well, because I had, I bought an electric um, weed whacker. Has a big old heavy battery on it. And she's not actually big enough and strong enough to really hold it well. And so when she's trying to turn it sideways and cut the head sideways, she doesn't have a lot of control. And my friends were like, I hope you hired a company. You certainly hired a company, or you did it yourself. You borrow the edger from my house, you can do it yourself. And I was like, um, I'm, my goal in life is not to raise grass. My goal is to raise kids. Guess how long it takes the grass to look good again? Like, like a week. 
Two weeks, the grass looks better. Growing up, I cared a ton about hair. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd screw up the haircut, like, and I'd be like devastated. My hair screwed up. I'm like, guess what the difference is between a bad haircut and a good haircut? Yes. About two weeks. I mean, if it's long and you shave it short, it'll take a little bit, but it can look good. And you can edge it and make it look good in a week or two. With my kids, I've shaved basketballs on their head. I've shaved mohawks. I've done yin-yang. I've done all sorts of things on my kids' heads. And they, well, they used to like it. Now they're like, Dad, we want a professional. <laughs> so they go to somebody else now. But... Remember this, we raise kids, not grass. You are supposed to fail. You are supposed to try stuff that's past what you're good at. You're supposed to learn how to wear masks when we're crappy wearing masks. And then they'll go away. You're supposed to manage stress and online Zoom when you can't log in, your teacher didn't get the thing done in the schedule, you don't have the login pin, and it's gonna fail and you're gonna complain. And that's how you get good at managing life. Because later on, you're going to have something else crappy happen. You're going to have a roommate like I did that stole all the food. <laughs> or I had a roommate that I, would, I got to college and I was stupid and I took too many credits. So I was working way, way, way too hard. And I'd come home to watch my one TV show. I'd say, hey, can I have the TV? And he's like, no, I was here first. I was like, you don't have any classes. You haven't left the couch in three days. Of course you were here first. <laughs> You've never left. <laughs> So I watched TV somewhere else. <laughs> we, I didn't, we didn't have phones back then, so you couldn't watch it on your phone. You're going to run into annoying people. You're going to run into failure. You're going to run into crappy stuff all the time. And life gets better. You're going to have huge moments when you question everything. Life gets better. Learn to adapt and change over time. Give each other second chances. If there's one thing I'd ask of your whole generation where phones are everywhere, don't record everything and put everything on social media, especially the embarrassing stuff. It's like, you know how much stupid stuff I did in middle school and high school? Stupid costumes. Like, somebody posted a picture of the senior all-night party after graduation, and me and three other guys texted him, get that off social media now. <laughs> Delete it now, 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 now. And he did. I was like, none of us were even drinking. We were just really excited we graduated. It was two in the morning, and we were being stupid. <laughs> And I don't need the world to remember that. We remember it, we did it, it was fun. Give each other second chances. Give each other chances to be stupid and silly and make awkward moments and awkward faces. And don't, even if you save it, save it for yourself. Don't save it for the rest of the world. Set your own limits and be mentally present in your class with your friends, with your family. The more you worry about what might go wrong, it almost never helps. How many of you worry about what might go wrong in the future? I mean, you talk to your parents about politics. You know many times I've heard in my life during different elections, well, now the, the country's going to hell now, so I'm going to move to Canada. I've heard that every single election. I heard that about Bush and Clinton and Bush and Obama and Trump and Biden. I've heard about everybody. And we're still here. And we're still fine. And we still got tons of problems in the country, and we can still work on fixing them. So that's most of my message today, give each other second chances. Keep your mind where your body is. Know that failure is the plan. It's the only way life works. Thanks for your time. We'll take questions if you want. And I'll hide the mic to your principal. Uh, let's give him one more really big round of applause, you guys. Thank you so much. I asked Dr. Larson to come, I think it was Sunday evening, and he's here with a complete personalized presentation for us like two days later. Thank you so much. Incredible. You guys, we love you so much. You are the exact freshman we want. You're the exact freshman we went out and looked for. I need you to work hard and go to class and pass your classes because I want you to be the best sophomores ever, too. All right? It's so important. Um, please have a wonderful day. Take care of each other and remember all the messages that Dr. Larson shared with us. Um, and just keep being yourselves. You're amazing. And we're going to become even better. <laughs>